Uh, thank you all for joining the conversation. My name is Bob Bach and I'm the, a member of the Board of Trustees of the St. Genevieve County Public Health Department. Currently, I serve in the capacity of board chairman. Present in this discussion are board members Carl Kinski and Dr. Matthew Bosner, as well as Jeanette Wood, administrator of the St. Genevieve County Health Department. We have a local public health crisis that within the past number of weeks has escalated by a significant factor beyond that which we experienced during the summer months. So we need your help. We're not asking for a great deal. It's something most of you have been doing since early spring, and we are asking that you keep doing it. When you think of it and do it, ask others to do it as well. Wear a mask. COVID-19 will in no uncertain terms strengthen its grip during the winter months. It's already begun. We experienced an unusual summer compared to our neighbors. COVID numbers in Perry, St. Francis, Cape and Jefferson counties early on showed large numbers in cases tested and equally a large number of cases proving positive as a result of those tests and sadly, a significant number of people who have died. In our county, the number of those who did not survive this scourge is very small, but we cannot think of that number as anything inanimate or intangible. Families grieve and a special time of the year is only a few weeks off. Wear a mask, maintain a distance when interacting with friends, neighbors, and when out in the community. Keep your hands clean. Make a concerted effort to not gather in large numbers. If you feel sick, please stay home. Adhere to the rules if you find yourself quarantined. These are what will take the fight to COVID. There appears to be a vaccine on the horizon too, in fact. They're not here yet, and the mechanics of, for, uh, for distribution are still in debate, so we cannot wait for a shot in the arm to pull us from this emergency. One truth is evident, wearing a mask reduces the transmission of the virus. It's that piece of equipment that provides two-way protection. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, provides discussion on the need for wearing a mask on their website. It's worth the time to read what they have to say. The health department is asking you to wear a mask. It is you saying to others, I understand what's at stake here. This is me and you working against this virus. We are in a heartbreaking conflict with a cruel enemy and the mask is one of our frontline combat weapons. We can choose how bad things will be. Why is the mask such an effective weapon? Some of you already know this. The CDC indicates COVID-19 spreads mainly from person to person through respiratory droplets. These droplets travel into the air when you cough, sneeze, or talk. They can find their way to others who are near you, and those people run a more reasonable risk of breathing in those droplets. Masks are a simple barrier to help prevent your respiratory droplets from reaching others. People with COVID-19 who never develop symptoms, who are asymptomatic, and those who are not yet showing symptoms, they're pre-symptomatic, can still spread the virus to other people. The main function of wearing a mask is to protect those around you in case you are infected but not showing symptoms. The CDC has also determined that the use of masks also help, uh, helps reduce inhalation of those droplets by the wearer. Thus, the community benefit is the combination of these effects. It's a matter of figuratively, yet genuinely, reaching out. We all benefit. What other issues exist within the health community, not just the health department? I am a member of the non-urban Missouri Healthcare Coalition Southeast Region, and we meet every Thursday via Zoom to discuss how COVID is unfolding within the region. Discussion focuses on personnel protection equipment, personal protection equipment, PPE, shortages, gloves, gowns, N95 masks, potential vaccines, how soon, how much, how deployed, vaccine shortage re storage requirements, where, temperature requirements, availability, screening and testing of COVID pages. Is there anything new that we need to know to, to actually do that effectively? Quarantine procedures. Are there any new federal, state, local guidelines or requirements with regards to quarantine? Staffing shortages. This is a real problem throughout the region, probably throughout the state and the country, staffing shortages. 
hospital bed availability, local capacity, projected patient numbers, hospital diversion, where to take a patient if local capacity is non-existent. And that has happened already in our county, specifically to the south of us. And it's probably getting close to that within, within our local community. A surge, what if a massive jump in patient numbers happens? Might we uh, be overwhelmed locally within our health uh, care um, capabilities? Missouri Delta Medical Center in Sykeston, as of 7, 7 p.m. last night, had serious inpatient processing and staffing issues, which has been ongoing. They also have issues, issues dealing with emergencies, and that's due to, to the, to the uh, inpatient processing and staffing issues that I just mentioned. They are on critical care diversion. Critical patients must go elsewhere, and sometimes finding another bed in another institution is not easy. They have only two available beds allocated to COVID patients. COVID numbers within the region doubled in the last seven days from in the seven days from November 5th to the 12th. This is particularly evident in our long-term care centers as well as county hospitals. It should be said that several counties have no hospital at all. Patients are transported to other counties, sometimes across state lines. Screening and testing in long-term care facilities is, is such that volunteers are being sought. This may extend to other facilities and may be necessary when the COVID vaccine finally arrives. Staffing is an issue at Pemiscott County Memorial Hospital and their ICU is closed. A quick look at state, uh, statewide numbers as of late yesterday, there were 243,169 positive cases in Missouri, just under 4% of the total population. 3,386 deaths, well over 2 million, nearly 3 million tests have been given at this point, currently averaging statewide are eight deaths per day. The COVID vaccine at the forefront, at least the most talked about is from Pfizer. It's showing about right at about 95% effect rate, effect success rate with a few effect, uh, side effects. Our problem is that it must be stored at minus 75 degrees Celsius. The only healthcare facility in the Southeast region with such capability is Southeast Health in Cape Girardeau. The state is discussing the use of dry ice, but even that may not be in great supply. The arrival of vaccine may receive a warm welcome, but it needs cold storage. So vaccine deployment may be problematic. Once deployed, the vaccine has a short window of viability. When opened and a number of doses extracted, it is 12 hours before the container can be opened again. The doses extracted have a lifespan of about five hours, so each dose should have a matching patient. It is obvious that the COVID vaccine cannot be something administered at a local physician's office, not for a while at least. Um, so where, where is St. Genevieve County now? Again, St. Genevieve's numbers remain low when compared to our neighbors. We want the, that trend to continue. It's my firm belief that COVID success or failure in our county lies with us. That was said earlier. I was watching an interview on C-SPAN listening to an infectious disease physician describe COVID as a whole body virus and it attacked various it, uh, tissues and parts of the body while still concentrating on the respiratory system. This physician also said COVID was a whole person virus, meaning that it also has an effect on the sufferer's mental well-being. Mental health issues further complicates a victim's ability to cope and brings on a gravity that in many cases proves fatal. Should the person recover, their mental health may remain fragile. Under no circumstances must we underestimate COVID's ability to devastate. What, what we, you and I, do now will impact the remainder of this year, in particular, the spiritual and family celebrations that make this time of year so special. What we do after these celebrations will impact the early months of the new year, perhaps spring and other spiritual and family celebrations. Think about it. It's here that we must be said that the efforts of those in our healthcare community have exceeded that which can be labeled as superb. Those who work in our hospital, in our clinics, our long-term care centers, fire, law enforcement, EMS, emergency responders, they all have given more than what has been asked. I especially laud the nurses, administrative people, and our environmental specialists 
of the Health Department for exceptional dedication, service, and sacrifice. Our schools are working feverishly to provide the best level of instruction within the constraints this virus now dictates. Local businesses depend almost entirely on our ability to move within the community as we take advantage of their products and services. Again, what is it that we all can do, all of us, you and I, keep this, our community, within the domain of acceptable public and in, individual health? Wear a mask. Maintain a social distance. Keep your hands clean. Make a concerted effort to not gather in large numbers. If you feel sick, please stay home. Adhere to the rules if you find yourself quarantined. Reach out. Share your need for good health with others. We're all in this together. And what will help is to get a flu shot. All right, I, th I do believe Dr. Bosner has some input with regards to a number of things. Thank you very much, Mr. Bach. Um, I just wanted to reiterate um, a couple of comments about the medical aspects of our situation. My name is Dr. Matthew Bosner. I am a member of the health board of the St. Genevieve County Health Department, and I am the chief of the medical staff of our local hospital, the St. Genevieve County Memorial Hospital. I wanted to let us all be up to date on the statistics of where we are on the COVID cases here in our county. As of 5 p.m. today, there were 964 cases of COVID in our community. That represents 5.5% of our population. What that means is that over five out of 100 people in our county have tested positive for COVID. That's really quite astounding. When we look back at October, specifically on October 16th, there were 308 cases, which represented only about 1.7% of our population. So you can see that the cases have increased by threefold since just about a month ago. That's quite astounding. When we look at our neighboring counties, Perry County, um, which is quite high at 6.9%, St. Francis County, 6.3%. Jefferson County, we are above Jefferson County now. They are at 4.2%. St. Louis County, we are above St. Louis County. St. Louis County uh, is at 4.3%. And our neighbor to the south, Cape County, uh, we are relatively close. They are at 5.8%. So we are right in the middle of all our neighboring counties up and down the eastern uh, seaboard, uh, eastern counties of state of Missouri. I was notified that there was a, uh, a call with the governor of all the, uh, with the health departments of the uh, state of Missouri this afternoon. The governor uh, discussed with the health departments the critical nature of the outbreak and the rapid increase in cases in all of the counties of Missouri, particularly our rural counties. The number of cases and the illness of our patients and the mortality has gone up significantly. We are noticing in our hospital um, an increase in cases and 25 to 50% of the inpatients in our hospital here in St. Genevieve are patients who unfortunately suffer COVID related diseases. And even a greater amount of patients in our emergency department um, also are being evaluated for COVID related uh, processes. We are having a difficult time transferring patients when they have significant uh, complications of COVID to our neighboring uh, hospitals that we have relationships with in St. Louis, in Jefferson County, and in Cape County, as they are ravaged with the disease. So this is becoming a much more serious problem, especially for our critically ill patients. So the take home message is that this is a serious problem which is getting more and more complicated and serious as the time goes on. We had great news this week about two vaccines, which will hopefully be available to us. Uh, each vaccine will be a, a two vaccine injection. You will uh, receive one vaccine and then a second booster shot in about three to four weeks. We hope that uh, it will be available uh, in several uh, weeks uh, to a month or so for healthcare providers and for the general public. We are praying that the vaccine will be available uh, in the early spring. Uh, 
depending on which uh, of the vaccine is available for our community. Um, it will either be available in the clinic system uh, if it's uh, one of the companies, or we may have to have certain inoculation sites set up if it's uh, available through the Pfizer uh, uh, type of vaccine because of the storage uh, opportunities. And you will learn more about that through our health department and through uh, information that we will release uh, to the public through public service announcements and through the newspaper and all kinds of other information. And also, of course, through the, your hospital and through your, your physicians. So if you have any questions, please uh, contact uh, the health department and we will be happy to get as much information to you as possible. And as Mr. Bach mentioned, the, the critical feature at this point of health is to stay a social distance, at least six feet apart Please remember to wash your hands as much as possible and also to wear masks. Thank you. And thank you for attending our webinar this afternoon. Mr. Bach. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Carl, do you, do you have something that you would uh, like to add to the conversation? Sure. I was just thinking that we're less than a week after celebrating or commemorating the veterans services this country. And right now, we need to ask all Americans to stand together against this disease the same way as the veterans stood for us in times of conflict. I believe that it's a patriotic duty to wear a mask. Now, I want to say the word that nobody wants to mention, mandates. The key thing is to get us to wear masks. If we will wear masks because it's our patriotic duty, then there won't be a need for a mandate. But we need to understand that we have got to wear masks, not so much to protect ourselves as to protect our neighbors and to protect our community and our whole county. So I urge everybody to do their patriotic duty and wear the masks and wash their hands and get their flu shots and do their social distance. When I think of all the things that the veterans have done to make America free, it's the least we can do to protect our neighbors and protect ourselves. That's really all that I have to say right now. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. Jeanette, would you, do you uh, have some input to, to the conversation? Do my input is wear a mask and definitely get your flu and pneumonia shots to stay as healthy as you can in the next coming months and everything. And although uh, large gatherings, that's another issue. A lot of us have a lot of people over the holidays and everything. This is just one year that that cannot happen. The other thing is think about this when we are able to get back together again and that it will happen and everything, let's make sure that there's not an empty spot at the table. Just think about that and wear a mask. Well said, well said. Um, with, with that, uh, we concludes our basic presentation. I was just wondering if was anybody out there perhaps have a question or, or something they would like to pose. I'm trying to see if we have, uh, how many participants we have, and I think we have all of five. So uh, I was hoping maybe somebody would uh, inquire as to our thinking, our comments, our statements, uh, but I'm not quite sure that might be the case. Bob, we have right now 444 people that are watching. Ah, okay. So some of the questions that are coming through are in regards to the school and what they're doing with the number of positive cases. Um, I don't know if that's even a question that you as a group can answer, but maybe um, you would like to comment on it in one way or another. Um, I think that'll be best for Jeanette. Yeah, does, does, um, does anybody have anything with regards to schools? I, there, there has been a dialogue uh, between our, our senior nurf, nursing staff and 
uh, the people at uh, the, the school, particularly St. Jen, and I, I think that's that's uh, there is uh, some good active um, uh, solutions being uh, uh, visualized, and I think put it put in place there. Um, um, but it's, with regard to specifics, I, I have none. So, um, and I don't know whether our, our administrator, Jeanette Wood, has any input to that, but uh, I know there is ongoing dialogue with regards to, with, with, the, with the schools. Yes, in fact, there'll be another meeting tomorrow sometime, if not tomorrow, then Thursday uh, for sure. And um, basically that's really um, all that I know myself is that they are going to meet again uh, with the uh, administrators and stuff at the school. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Is uh, do we have any any uh, any others? Um, there was a question about: Is there any known side effects as of now of the vaccine? I'll let um, Dr. Pazzo maybe address that. The, the information that have come from both companies have just been press releases. There's been no release of the actual data. However, in both press releases from Pfizer as well as Moderna, they said that there were no serious side effects. Now, the Moderna vaccine has not completed their second uh, set of, of vaccinations yet. They're waiting for that. That's why their vaccine has not been uh, presented to the FDA yet um, for for emergency use uh, release um, that will come in the next uh, week or so. Um, but there but there apparently have been no serious side effects. Um, but uh, that's what we that's what we're we're waiting to hear. But that's all great news. There's apparently 95% efficacy uh, in preventing um, COVID in the patients that were. Uh, getting the active vaccine, that's incredibly beneficial. Um, and we're waiting to see um, when, when it's gonna be released. So we're very excited about that in the healthcare community. There was also questions about what someone would do to boost their immune system. If there's any general advice. The general advice is to stay healthy is to stay healthy and to continue to take your medications. The other uh, point that we all tell our patients is to continue to get your regular medical care. And we think that's very important. Please don't put off your regular medical visits to your providers. And we've been telling all our patients that. I know the health department has also been stressing that. Please don't miss your regular, your, your regular appointments with your healthcare providers um, at your hospital, um, your visits, your mammograms, your colonoscopies. Um, and all your right, and please make sure you get refills on your medications. And we already talked about flu shots. This is season for flu shots and, and pneumonia shots. That's critically important, especially in this time of COVID. Um, a lot of patients, um, you know, question about getting flu shots. And even the pa my patients who have been questioning flu shots in the past, I discussed with them the critical importance in this time of COVID of getting a flu shot. And most of my patients, after I have a heart to heart talk to them, uh, will go ahead and agree to get their flu shots. So please talk to your healthcare provider about your general health needs and maintaining uh, those health uh, requirements. Plus, please get your health shots um, at your healthcare provider as well as the health department. Okay, one last question. Um, it's, there are several questions coming through about contact tracing. Um, what is being done? Um, is there any effort in hiring more contact tracers to help with the increased numbers? I'll answer that uh, question. And I've uh, talked to the nurses and uh, who currently do that and everything. Their concern about contracting, contract tracing out of the building and everything is Everybody knows the nurses here at the health department. And when the, if you turn up being positive and you're called by somebody that you really don't know, you're gonna end up calling back here to the health department and 
you have comfort to talk to people that you know that will understand what you're coming from and everything rather than uh for lack of a better term some stranger and everything that has been brought up on occasions if i if i can add to that contact tracers um you know we haven't we have discussed that uh um the, the thing is the contact tracing is requires at least a two-day training uh, period, um, uh, and not that that's necessarily a, a insurmountable thing. Uh, but you know, we, uh, there we've discussed that, and it, it as yet have um, not necessarily reached a conclusion as to what, what we need to do. Um, is it is it something that needs to be addressed? Yes, but. Uh, um, uh, we need we need to discuss that a little bit further. Any other questions? Well, there there are there are lots of questions that are still coming through, and a couple of the questions are related to why or why not uh, a mass man, a mass mandate. So why is it difficult to enforce, and why it's it's not something that has been done in our county. Um, There's just a uh, lot of questions on, around that. On, on why, and why we have not had one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I can address that, but also I think maybe Carl might want to say something to that perhaps. Sure. Well, the, the key thing is our goal is to increase wearing masks. So the question is, would a mandate increase mask wearing or not? You know, we've had in this country an experience with prohibition. I don't know whether mask mandates would increase wearing masks. I personally, for myself, am coming around to the idea that they would. But this isn't a decision for one person, it's a decision for the board. Now, the way the mandate would work is we would possibly pass a mandate. It could have restrictions on where you have to wear a mask what sort of exemptions there might be. There'd be a whole bunch of provisions to the mandate. The health department could set to some extent what the penalty would be. It would be an infraction, which means it would be punishable by a fine. But the key question is enforcement, the same as it was back in the days of prohibition. Who's going to enforce it? It's not the health department that's going to write a citation. It's going to have to come from law enforcement officers. And what is the response gonna be from the public? Are we gonna have people who take a position of the heck with that? The government isn't gonna tell me what to do. I'm sick of being told to wear motorcycle helmets and buckle my seat belts. Are we going to have a decline in mask wearing or an increase in mask wearing? Those are the key issues that we have to decide. I think as a health department, we are saying probably in annoying repetition, wear a mask, but whether a mandate will increase mask wearing or not remains to be seen. You know, in some counties, it doesn't seem to have done so well, but as I walk around, I see more people wearing masks every day. So I think people are starting to realize that it is their duty to themselves and to their neighbors. I think that this is an issue that the board is gonna to have to address in the next couple days, or maybe if we're lucky in the next week. But the key issue is, will a mandate be enforced and will it result in more people donning the masks to help themselves and to help their neighbors? Yeah, I, I don't know what to add to that. Uh, uh, we, it's, it's not as if we have not talked about that as a board, we have. And, and, and you can see the, uh, sometimes the dilemma that is presented and um, um, it's not necessarily out of the question, um, um, but it, it, is, it is something that at this point obviously has not happened, but um, uh, you know, it, it, I think Wearing a, a mandate would uh, eventuate if, for some reason, our pleas uh, in this presentation uh, go unheeded, and and they and our numbers keep going up 
at the rather uh, uh, alarming rate that they are. So um, I, I think if, if we can see that these, these, these numbers that uh, um, are rather frightening at the moment uh, stabilize, uh, which means maybe we can assume that, that people are wearing their masks in, in uh, uh, much more ser seriously, uh, perhaps a mandate may be something we can just keep as a, as a possibility rather than, than a, 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 a put it in force. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that answers the question. Does anybody else have any input on that? Well, I wanna just add one thing. You know, we can, this board could pass a mandate for St. Genevieve County, but we Americans are fluid people. We don't pay all that much attention to county lines. And it seems to me that a mandate works best if it casts a wider net. It remains to be seen whether we will need a mandate in this county and whether a mandate will be effective in increasing mask wearing. But it seems also clear to me that a mandate would be better if it were set on a larger scale than just one county in Southeast Missouri. Any other questions? Do you have time for one more? Go ahead. Yeah. Because this is one that I think um, is the purpose of this message that you are trying to deliver. Um, someone asked, why should we be so concerned or worried about a virus that has um, the, the death rate is low when you look at the, the percentage? The, the, the death rate, okay, the death rate overall is two to four percent, but once you get into the hospital, the mortality is 10 to 20 percent, and once you go to an ICU, the death rate is 20 to 30 percent. What that means is when you go to an ICU and you, you're intubated, you're put on a ventilator, there's a one out of three chance that you're going to die, okay, and you don't know if you're going to be one of those patients. We have 80 or 90 year old people who do just fine and actually do, do well. And we have 20 or 30 year old people who go on a ventilator and die from this disease. And we don't know what are the, what are the circumstances that categorize people into which group who do well with, who experience COVID and which patients who don't do well with COVID. And that's why it's important to wear masks across the whole spectrum. We say generally that younger people um, don't get uh, ill from the disease, but what we're concerned about is the younger people bring, bringing it home and uh, gi giving it to their parents and their grandparents and their other loved ones who they live with. We have multi-generational families, especially here in rural communities. And that's what we're concerned about. That's why wearing masks in school and, and having protection in school and in church is just as important is having protection at home. For example, we have at our work at the hospital, I work at the hospital in our town and we have a mask mandate in the, in the hospital. Um, and it's, it's critical when you walk into the hospital, you have to wear a mask to the time you walk out and hopefully you continue to wear a mask throughout your, your period out into the community. So that's why we think it, it's important because the mortality for certain individuals is low but for an, any one individual, it's 100%. If you die, you die, okay? And, and that, that's the hard fact, okay? It's, you don't sort of die. When you die, you die. And if it's your mother, if it's your father, if it's your child, if it's your grandmother, it, it's a horrible situation. And that's what we wanna prevent. As, as Jeanette said quite well, we, we wanna prevent that empty spot at your Thanksgiving and Christmas table. And any preventable, to death or any preventable disease is a success for the healthcare community. And wearing a mask will prevent further progression of disease in the community. And of course, vaccination will be a significant benefit in the future. And that, that I'm sure will be another webinar that we'll have in the future about expanding the use of vaccination. And we'll, we'll have another a webinar like this in the future um, 
about the importance of vaccination when we know more details. And if I could say something about this 1% figure, let's understand that this county is 17,800 people. So 1% of that is 178 people. That is a high school graduating class. And we are talking about 1% deaths from COVID. That doesn't count the deaths that are indirect from COVID. The hospital care that can't be provided because a COVID patient is occupying the ICU or some treatment that's not provided that is essential for a patient who can't get it because of COVID. 1% is a high mortality rate for a virus. And we need to take that 1% seriously. You know, 1% of this county being lost in this year would be a terrible, terrible tragedy. Well said. Anybody, any other questions? I think that covers the range of questions that have been coming through. There are other specific questions, but all seem to be related around those that I asked. Um, okay, uh, if, with, with that said. Um, uh, Bob. Uh, yes, Bob, yes. This yes. is uh, Jeanette. Uh, one thing I'd uh, like to say is that as the <clears throat> pneumonia shot shots can be gotten, here, very similar to how the flu shot is done. The only thing you have to call your physician first and they fax the order over and then you can call, make an appointment, come. You don't have to get out of your car and you can get your pneumonia shot. So that is very, very important. I feel that everybody gets a pneumonia shot. Yeah, uh, I agree. Anything else? Okay, I, I, I think if there's nothing else, I guess we'll, uh, we'll wind up this particular uh, session. Uh, I, I think it's went well, and perhaps in the future, we may need to contemplate others just to keep in touch with the community. Um, so with that, I think we'll sign off. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay, I will, I will end now. Okay.